Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 7. And the Lord said unto Noah, almost said Moses, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. All right, let's look at this real quick, real simple. A person, you get two people, and they're outside. He says, Come here. The person comes to him. You got somebody who's inside of a building or inside of a car. Come into the house. Come into the car. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. God is in that ark. And saying, Noah, come in. Come join me. For thee have I seen righteousness before me in this generation. We saw what this generation is. is violence in chapter 6. And there's only one man. Now, yeah, Noah's wife, his three sons, and his wives. Eight people in the ark. But who does God always ever speak about during this period from Noah to the end of Noah's life? Who is the one that God says is righteous, is doing what God wants him to do, is walking with God? It's just Noah. We don't even know his wife's name. We don't even know the names of the wives of his children. Now, <coughs> excuse me. God could have taken Noah just like he done with Adam. I'm going to save you. I'll make you a help me. But that didn't happen. For some reason, I don't know what it is. Noah's family is saved by Noah's acts. And that is not today in a church age. You can't be saved because your mom or dad are right with the Lord. Building an ark. I got to say this because they've done that in two places in this world. Building that ark is not going to save your soul. This is a period of time that has only happened to one man and at one specific time. If you're going to do what the Bible tells you to do, you're not to build the ark. You're to go out and preach the gospel. Well, I don't know. I've never been to that place. I don't want to go to those places. I don't care. And they made we get the gospel out after how much you charge for admissions and for the shirts and everything. For thee have I seen righteousness. We don't see that any of his family before me in this generation of clean beasts. That's interesting. Because there's no law. The law does not, I mean, the, the, the clean beasts do not show up into the law in Leviticus. Where God sets forth those animals and says, hey, listen, Israel, you cannot eat these specific animals. They are unclean to you. And there's a complete, there's a complete list found in Leviticus. But we are before the law. We are dealing with a Gentile named Noah. And God says, clean beast. 
They are not eating the bees. Paul says when, when we are to eat meat, can you have a pork sandwich? Paul says, if you can bow down your head and say, Lord God, I thank you for this pork sandwich. I, I, I thank you for the lobster. You can eat it. Not the Jew. And these are animals that are not eaten because we're still vegetarians at this time. Thou shalt take thee by seven. So when you ask the question about Noah's Ark, the standard answer you would get, how many animals went into that ark is, you'll find, they went two by two, male and female. There were seven of animals right there. Why? Because when Noah gets out of that ark, the first thing he does is he builds an altar and offers animals. And if he had offered the only animals, we would not have a bull, we would not have a lamb, and whatever other animals, I don't know if it gives us later on, what animals he offered. So, God called the animals into Noah's Ark two by two, not, no, not all of them. The male and his female. Now, notice how many times that's going to come up, the American generation in the world that we are in today. They don't realize that there's a male and a female, and the Bible says yes. And I guarantee there are modern versions, and there are going to be more modern versions that are going to remove that distinction of male and female. Someone right now is probably working on, and it's already there, the gender-neutral Bible. They've already made God an it and not a him. Because that upset the women's right movement. You can find those Bibles. And of the beasts that are not clean, by two. So let's look at let's look at where we are with the study of Noah's Ark. As far as we take the Bible. They went in two by two by males and females. And our Human sinful flesh always relates to the unclean animals and not the clean animals. Because if you were to if you were to give the answer correctly, you say, well, the clean animals went in by sevens and the unclean went in by twos. But we always forget the clean animals. And again, the male and his female. And this is before the law. Now, are they the same clean animals? Are they the same unclean animals that you find in the law? I don't know. See, I don't know things in the Bible. Of fowls, that's birds. Also of the of the air by sevens. Why? Because chicken's going to taste good. Turkey? I don't really like turkey. But that's going to be, that's one of the games. The male and the female. Have we got it right? Do we know that God knows that there's a male and female? And those male chauvinists and pigs that God is, he always puts the male first and then the female. Call God racist, call him a bigot, whatever you want. He, the male is dominant over the female. That's the way God has it. To keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. So the animals that we have today, and I'm not counting the ones that have been extinct, but all the animals we have today were animals of their classifications, of their family, were on that ark. Now there weren't two bulldogs, and there weren't two collies, there weren't two uh, whatever other kinds of dogs. There was a family of dogs. Well, they all come from what animals were on this ark. For yet in seven days, one week, that God created the, he the heavens and the earth. Notice how that, se that seven days shows up. And I will cause it to rain upon the earth. Now get this picture Noah there's a uh, God. Wait a minute. What's rain? He doesn't question God. God says it's going to rain on the, upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights and no one doesn't okay you say it's going to rain whatever this rain is because it's never rained ever okay God you say it's going to rain it's going to rain 
Look at the faith Noah has by the word of God. I'm glad he didn't have a modern Bible because I don't know what it, what it would say to God. And every living substance that I have made will I, will I, God, destroy off the face of the earth. That's that loving God. And yes, he's the God of love. But he's also the God of holy judgment. And which shows to us that in the end of all times and judgment, not everybody is going to end up in heaven. And Noah did according to did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And look at 622. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Noah is obedient to God. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. He's an old man. That shows you the strength they had in their age. Now, I don't know if that 600 years old would be our 20 teenage years of strength. But we're given a date and time. And Noah went in the ark and his sons and his wife and his son's wife with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. There had been no flood yet. And yet they go in because God said, I'm going, to, I'm going to flood it all out. There is no questioning God. There is no what God? Of clean beasts. And of the beasts that are not clean. Again, we see it for the first time here in chapter 7. Clean and unclean beasts. And the fowls of everything that creepeth upon the earth. No reptile or, or fish class animal. They're outside in the waters. Now went, there went in two and two unto Noah in the ark. Where does it ever read to say that Noah went and got those animals? You know what God's showing the world right now? He's showing the testimony of his work. Isn't it weird? Okay, here's an... I'm, gonna say, I'm looking at the, at the world's point of view, okay? Here's an idiot building this stupid ship in the middle of a desert region somewhere. Proclaiming that it's going to do this thing rain, that God's going to kill us all, but God is love. And then the next thing they see, that this ark is finished. And just by chance, the animals are start showing up. And they are in a line. And in that line is... A male and female elephant together. A male and female giraffe together. A male and female rabbit together. And behind them is a male and female lion and tiger. And they are not chasing the rabbits for food. Because there's no meat eaters here. And they line into that ark by God. Male and female. You don't have a rhinoceros here and way down the other side of another rhinoceros. They're together. How on earth did them animals get in that ark with their husband and wife respectfully? And no, uh, you didn't get four sets of elephants. You only had two. That had to be God and you knew the world had to be watching. And they still, no one got into that ark. That's remarkable. And went in, there went in two and two unto Noah, into the ark, the male and the female, again, God's got to say that, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days, it would be eight, the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600 year of Noah's life, he's 600 years old, in the second month of the 17th day of the month. It's dated. The same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up. And the windows of heaven were open. So around in the earth, above the earth, had been waters. And they're just let go. 
And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And not just the rain, but all the fountains open. It just not just rain, but the water that was encased in the earth came up and out. The, the waters that were in the heavens dropped down. The windows were open, and it rained. This is a violent time. In the same self day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah. Noah's wife, we never told what her name is. And the three wives were never told what their names are of his sons with them into the ark. Entire population, eight souls only. They and every beast after his kind. And all the cattle after their kind. And every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth after his. You just imagine watching two earthworms walking up that gangplay. Two beetles. Two cockroaches. I don't know if it would have been a queen ant in, in one of her drones, but there they go. After his kind, every fall after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah. He's in the ark. They are coming to him. Into the ark. Two and two of all flesh. Where is the breath of life? It's an order, orderly fashion that this is happening. You ever see like a line at, at, at the grocery store? A line wherever you go, there's a line. It's orderly. There's no chaos. And there's no hurry up getting that ark before we die. And they that went in, went in male and female. Come on, God. What are you trying to tell us? Of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. They are all in the ark. They're doing what they're doing. And then God closes that door. And you know what's remarkable about that door? We said it was pitched. When that door was closed, God had to seal that door so no water would get in. It ain't just a rainstorm. It is just violent torrent of water. And God, the Holy Spirit, seals them inside that place. There it is. And God is with them. Because remember, God said, come on in with me. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth. And the waters increased. And bared up the ark. And it was lifted up above the earth. There was no sea trial for this boat. Noah didn't take it out on a cruise to see if it worked. To make sure it floated. The great faith of Noah is I built it. We got in it. The door was shut. It's going to do what God told me it's going to do. And the waters prevailed. And were increased greatly upon the earth. The ark went upon the face of the waters. This is floating. It does not have an engine. It does not have a rudder. It does not have a sail. It is made just to float. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail. And the mountains were covered. So no one can jump to the mountains and be saved. The mountains went under water. So why do you find fish fossils? Why do you see bird fossils? Why do you see mammal fossils on top of <coughs> mountains where you should not see them? Because that's where how high the waters went. And those waters had a bunch of dead animals. And had a bunch of fish that probably got stuck. When the water started receding. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth. Both of fowl and of cattle. And of beasts and every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. And every man except for the eight that were in the ark. They are floating. Dead. 
Trees are, are just floating. They've been ripped up from the roots. Sharks are having a field day. The marine life is enjoying the cows and the beasts. All in whose nostrils the nose was the breath of life. We saw that in Genesis 2. Where God breathed in the man, he became a living soul. And all that was in the dry land died. Now, we read that the sons of God, we got to get this one, saw the daughters of the man, and they came and married him and had giants that were before the flood and after the flood, Goliath and all that. Who would survive this that's on this planet right now? Angels. They don't have breath. It says the animals and man, but what about the sons of God that were there? They survive and they get back to doing what they're doing because you got Goliath and all of them showing up again. Every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground. You say, well, every living, aren't, aren't angels living? Not the fallen angels in the eyes of God. They're, they're dead. They can never get saved. They can never get right. And they can never repent. They're just surviving until the last judgment day. When we shall judge them. Every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground. Both man and cattle and the creepy things. And the fowls of the heaven, they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. Noah's all the fish, the reptiles, they're not mentioned. They're in the waters. And the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. That's a long time. And the ark is just floating around. The animals are in there doing what the animals do or whatever God had them to do with hibernation. And those eight souls are just doing what they're doing. Just floating around. No aim, nowhere to go, just float. 